I plan to stay drug free. I plan to stay drug free. I pledge to stay drug free. I pledge to be drug free. I pledge to stay drug free. And good afternoon, and welcome to Expose Under the Sun, sponsored by the Detroit Native Sun newspaper. I'm your host, Darwin Griffin, and we will have a very mm. interesting 30 minutes of news that will appeal to all people that live around and in the cities of Detroit and Highland Park. If you'd like to join in on the conversation, the call-in numbers are area code 313-868-0342. 313-868-0351 or 313-868-4336. And the website is www.tv33whpr.com. And you are watching from the awesome city of Highland Park, Michigan. And congratulations to the mayor who was reelected, the Honorable Hubert Yap. And again, just want to uh, just say a little bit of, um, you know, condolences again to the Conyers family for the loss of the dean, mm -hmm. Mr. Congressman John Conyers. And just before we get started with my guests, I'd like to make one other announcement. As those of you may know, I'm the second vice chair of the Michigan Democratic Party Black Caucus mm -hmm. under the leadership of Keith D. Williams, and who is our chair. And I just wanted to say that be looking out for our fundraiser that we've got coming up on August, I'm sorry, on December the 6th. And it's going to be at the TULC, and it's going to be called The Blackout of 2019. And we're going to be having a fundraiser that's going to pretty much like there's going to be live entertainment. We're going to have a DJ. We're going to have uh, good food, good camaraderie, good networking, a good opportunity to go and interact with a lot of great people in the city of Detroit. So please come on out and support us. Again, that's going to be at the TULC December the 6th from 6 o'clock until 10. You know, with us, it may be a little bit longer, but, you know, when people get to, you know, having a good time, we want to make certain that we have a lot of networking opportunities and a lot of cards to be passed. So bring a lot of your business cards because there's going to be a lot of good networking done too as well. And now I've got a, a returning guest that's been on my show several times before. And I probably don't even need to go and give him an introduction because, you know, when you see his face, you'll be like, oh, that's Ishmael. So everybody will know who he is. But the other young man that's in the middle between Ishmael and I, his name is Edwin Dodd. And he is the CEO and president of Pleasant Heights and also for All for One. Correct? Yeah. Okay. All right. So Ishmael Terry, like said you know everybody knows Ishmael and Edwin died thank you for tuning in today thank you, thank thank you for, for being me. on the show today thank you thank you thank you for but you've got a you, you you've got a a event that's coming up this coming Thursday is that correct yes okay yes. Edwin can you give our listening and our viewing audience a little bit more details about what you've got coming on you know coming up and also where it's gonna be located at and the purpose of this event it's gonna be at St. Cecilia uh, on Burley Game off Livernoise, and it's our social economic panel, and we're going to be talking about development and development strategies on how to build communities, some innovative ways of doing that, and some new ways. Uh, who we have coming is was the Mr. so we have uh, Gary Heidel, the executive director for Hi uh, Mista. Okay. We also have Dr. Uh, Raymond Mohammed. Uh, he is the graduate director for urban studies at Wayne State. Okay. So he's coming along with Edwin Dow, who also is going to be um, on the panel um, to talk about agriculture and things of that nature, and so uh, we and technology. And so we're the the goal of this social economic forums is to pay attention to the ideology, of economic structure, and the fabric that uh, that is missing 
in most urban um, communities. And so we, we bring those kind of resources in those areas. Like we don't do the traditional, there are booths and people who are sitting in those booths and you can pick up pamphlets and things of that nature. We actually do, we actually take the, uh, because we're, we're involved or partnership with the World's Economic Forum, we take that kind of mentality um, to the urban experience. So we don't put, um, like I said, the traditional ways how we do things like that in these communities. Uh, but what we do is we have real strong panelists who are very um, experienced in their craft and in involvements into understanding how to alleviate resources if some are to offer and strong Q and A's and um, good response between um, the panelists as well as the audience. Now, what, what are some of your, gentlemen, what are some of the takeaways that you'd like the audience to take away when they leave from your forum on Thursday? Hmm. Um, you want me to answer that? Yes, you okay. go first, you go uh, first. Okay, so I would like for them to get the idea that they're not left behind. Mm -hmm. um, so all the residents have an opportunity yeah, to see, voice their concerns. Yeah, because no, it, and, and see, we don't want you to do it in that fr framework. We don't want you to say, this is what we're missing. We want you to understand that we're bringing something to you that you already knew you was missing. So we're bringing kind of them out of the office, and we're bringing them to you. So now you don't have to call a 1-800 number or a 224 number. You're actually going to see the executive director from MISTA. So now all of those things where seniors are talking about, I need my what home is to be It's the Michigan Housing um, um, Authority. Okay. State authority, so that they actually, they actually manage the funding from HUD, which then allocates funding to the city and to the county to do things like the NEZ zone, or they handles the CDBGF funding. Not, 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 like not do this. Yes, talk to me like I'm just a regular left person. <laughs> oh, sorry, when no. you said those terms, when yes. you said those acronyms, say yeah. what those acronyms mean. So the NEZ is the I mean, if you don't know the exact I don't know the title, exact title for but the NEZ. tell what they do. So the NEZ allows residents, such as in the state, in all of Michigan. Okay. Basically, it's the uh, quintessential of the CDBGF funding, which was funded was was a funding opportunity for residents in the city of Detroit to be able to gain access to that funding and to do home repair or commercial. So was some repair. of that part of with the land bank, in some way, yeah. Okay. And so it tied in with the, uh, so I'm going to tell you how the NEZ operates. Okay. So the NEZ was operated because at the time, your mayor, Dave Bing, um, and city council under Ken Cockrell and them, and Rick Snyder started getting involved. Was well, Rick Snyder was the governor. Governor. Okay. Was saying that us as residents were misusing the CDBGF funding, which is a, basically it's not even a loan. It's basically, I was on that CDBGF funding opportunity, uh, on that, that committee for the city of Detroit during Kwame Kilpatrick's era as mayor. And what we did was we basically, people would apply for this funding and say, this is what I needed to go to. I needed to fix up my building, my commercial building, or I needed to fix up my residential. And then you had to meet the thresholds. And once you did, then we, as the people on that committee, and that was going on when I was on that committee was from 2004 to 2007. So what were some of the thresholds? Well, some of the thresholds was like community support. Okay. So if you had like letters from the community block club presidents saying that they support you and your efforts, you can get, you, you were able to get that funding. So you can reach up to like $500,000. And so then we would make the determination if you were eligible to receive that funding. Or if you're not, we actually reduce it down. We wouldn't say just no completely. You would have to have met none of the criterias to get no. So some people got $20,000. Some people got $30,000. Uh, but then now, at the how, time. Now, how did they show their accountability? Well, what we would come by. So you would come actually by. go by yeah, the we'll site. Yeah, we would physically go by the site and see if you have done the some work of the work that, that you said you were going to do. do. Okay. And so uh, then that became texting because of the fact that because at that time, I was part of Pleasant, I mean, not Pleasant Heights, but I was part of Planning Development Commission under uh, Mar Marcel Todd when this is all came around. James Rembrandt, Tony um, 
Tony Jeffries. And um, and so they were showing me how the CDBGF funding actually works and how do residents utilize this money to be able to fix up their property. Well, then when Rick Snyder became governor and Dave Bing was mayor, they they were looking at, well, let's take this funding. This is a unrestricting funding. Well, rest, yeah, unrestricting. So that means you could use it for anything from the federal end. But they were supposed to only use it for CDBGF. Well, they used it for take, uh, what's the name of that, um, that um, um, step forward program. So they, what they were saying with the CDBGF funding was, was, was misused or mishandled, so they gave them a reason to take HUD money, which they weren't supposed to do. That's a violation in itself. Mm -hmm. They took that CDBGF funding and moved it towards Step Forward program, which now we know that that was a bus, because now you know you see half the residents in the city of Detroit losing properties <clears throat> because they're unmanageable. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, from blights and things of that nature of overgrowing. So because of that. Say it again, over who? Overgrowing. Okay. So like overgrowth of lawns. Okay. Um, um, so the weeds, the, over yeah, the lawns. Yeah, and okay. then you're seeing bricks falling off buildings right. and things like that. And then nature. that could be a hazard to people. You got it. Especially so like school the children. The reason to then take ownership of the property. Okay. Send you citations, enforce them, then sue you, okay. and then take your property away. So these were tactics to be able to get more residents out of the out of these homes and out of these commercial, which is unfair practice because the resident wasn't aware of this. So now you having these people running around here trying to figure out how do I keep my house or how do I keep my commercial. Well, now you now you see that the uh, balloony of the the housing market or mortgage under Fannie Mae and all of those start to play a role. Then that start actually um, getting people to understand well, you pay into this low market value and your mortgage won't go up for the next 10 years, but that was a farce. So now people are getting caught in their homes being taken over. Now when they move to CDBGF funding, the idea was move it over to this, to the Step 4 program, because they were, they were, trying, they were convincing to the state and to the federal government that this will help alleviate some of the problems of tax foreclosures. And people, and you start seeing that the numbers start to swell over 80% of calls going to the step four programs wasn't even heard. So people were losing their houses. So now Mike Duggan is now trying to basically, uh, I can't take this back. I can't t put the CBG CDBGF funding back, but we can do this NEZ loan. And a lot of people don't understand that if your area is in the NEZ loan, area, red district area, then you can apply for this. So there are certain areas in the city of Detroit Correct. that are not eligible the, you got for the loans. NEZ loan. Right. Because they're, they're basically, I don't want to say hand-picked, but they're picked um, in certain areas in the city of Detroit. Give me an example. Give me an area. So like in, West Parkway. Okay. I'm going to give you that. So where Brennan West Park, Parkway, over there yeah, by, by, by River Rouge. Yeah, where okay. River Rouge at. They're in easy. Okay. So they can actually apply for funding. And what the funding does is actually mitigates towards ref refurbishing things in your home to actually look at either reducing down your taxes or raising the taxes in the community, depending on the area. So it can actually help you reduce down your taxes if everything is built, if all of the homes are up to, up to code. And so that's what the NEZ is supposed to do. Now, you can go up to $500 to $1,000 in the NEZ, and then that will allow you to be able to um, fix doors, windows, things of that nature. It's not to do lawn care, but you can actually purchase you know, things of that nature. So it's the replica of uh, the CDBGF funding, but it's not. It's it's a loan. Where the CDBGF funding was a HUD funding, federal government funding for people in the city of Detroit to be able to manage their properties, to fix up their homes, put new doors, windows, light fixtures, things of that nature, but the same for commercial. It behooves me to understand why did Dave Bing and Rick Snyder and then Mike Duggan do this. Why did they not just say, oh, we give you a five-year window 
and then we'll bring back the CDBGF funding. Because HUD is upset about that. Because they never told, they never ha had gave permission for the city of Detroit and then administrations to be able to turn the CDBGF funding into the Step Forward program. They find it appalling. I'm talking to the director, Michael Polinoni, and the rest of them, and Keith Hernandez, who felt the same way, who said, this is not what the CDBGF funding was supposed to be meant to. It was supposed to be meant for residents in the city of Detroit in the state of Michigan, throughout southeastern Michigan and Wayne County, and so forth, to be able to use this funds to help relieve issues that you can't afford out of your own pocket to pay for these things. So let's 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 talk about the differences cuz mm -hmm. you know when you're talking about the CBG you know CBDGF yes or BGF funds you're talking about a block grant basically. grant basically being monies that you don't have to pay back. Correct. But now when you're talking about a loan you're talking about money that you got to pay it back. You do. So what And you got the, 15 years. That's what I was going to ask you. you got so the window years is 15 of, years. The window is 15 years. And then uh, and then so what kind of interest is on that? Or is there an interest? There's no interest. No interest? Okay. No. Mm. So but it's still a fact though. You're still paying a loan. You still have to pay it back. Yeah. So what if you can't pay it back? That's, that's that's the problem, right? right? So, so then, what do they do? They, they can take your house. They can because you now invested into something that we're now trying to get back. Follow me. So the game is not the game is not for you just to fix up the property. The game is how long can you pay it back? And if you can't, it's like you back at square one. Somebody can actually pay off that debt, and then acquire and then that. now they can acquire your property. So but now you they, fixed it up for me. So now I don't have to worry about. I don't have to, to go worry take about a loan or get a loan grant to fix, it, fix it, up. it up because you already did it for me. But so now the other question too sure. is that I know the city council had that meeting last night. They did, and they were talking about in terms of say, well, the demolition for <laughs> yeah. a lot of those homes in yeah. the city of Detroit. Which so now right. the other question is too is that then so if they go in mm -hmm. and let's say the person doesn't fix the house up, yeah, within that fifteen that year window, window right. then the house may still be blighted during that time and then it may be set up for possible demolition if the house has not been repaired that's in that not true. time. That's not so true. That, that, that's they don't have to worry about that part. No. no. What happens then if the house, if it needs to be brought up to code and it's not brought up to code, what happens to that home then? Then it sits like it normally does. It sits into the city's landfill housing okay. market. It goes to either the land bank <clears throat> and then the land bank sells it to Wayne County. Now explain the land bank. Okay, so the land bank, I, and I just had this conversation with some people. The land bank was mostly a commercial entity. Okay. It was not in the residential property. I can tell you this because in 04, the person that was the executive director, Andres Wallace, who's in Louisiana, was like, we're doing something different. So this is when Jackson, George Jackson and them, Jr., was in Detroit Economic Growth Corporation. Mm -hmm. Andres Wallace and them and the land bank was just doing only commercial property. Mm -hmm. So when they got into the residential property, that's because they knew the mortgage boom was about to happen. Go down. Okay. So they then became a private contractor to the city of Detroit to own to keep control basically <laughs> or monitor all of the housing, as many houses that they can collect. The rest was to go to Wayne County. So then Wayne, what would happen is, is that the city then would say, okay, we're going to sell the property to Wayne County because mm -hmm. we can't sell them. Okay. The land bank then said, well, we're going to tie it into the Step Forward program, and then you had to have a threshold of a uh, – your, your score had to be 700. Well, then they started running out. Residents couldn't afford – didn't have a credit score of 700. Okay. Most of the residents had 550 or 500 or 400, 300 and lower. So they said, well, we'll change the number. Credit score will be 650. Mm. Then they like, well, we got to change it lower than that because we can't get no one. Can't, can't get that. Right. Right. So you can't get that 0% interest loan. Okay. So they was like, well, we'll just take it whatever. So we'll drop it down to 500 and see what we can do with that. But you still have 43,000 some houses in the city of Detroit that was just stockpiled. So now you say there's about how many? 43,000. 43,000 homes. That are really, that's either you're going to sell as is, like you know a car. Okay. Or you're going to clean up. The mayor can't cover that much. So that's why you're consolidating the city. Let me put it to you this way. 
Dave Bean came to us in Lansing when I was in the Michigan House of Representatives with me and Fred Durhall Jr. and George okay. Cushing burying them. He, compl he said that financially he could not hold the city together because the city was going under siege financially. So I have to consolidate the city. Imagine that a mayor is telling you 140 acres of land he can't control financially, and I'm going to have to consolidate the city. So that means you're going to generalize pick areas or boroughs that you're going to concentrate on to fix, and the other ones are going to have to fend for themselves or stay, stay as long as mobile as possible until it's time for us to really throw some funding. That's what this neighborhood strategic funding is about. Neighborhood strategic funding is a HUD program funding source that allow you to take pocket areas and invest money into that, utilizing philanthropics, corporate, and civic to build in that community. When you only have two partials, civic and philanthropic, you're now in a stage of waiting. It could be 10 years. It could be 15 years before they can actually interact with you. I think that's why when we created Pleasant Heights, it wasn't to say we just want to build something. We wanted them to understand that we couldn't wait no longer 10 to 15 years for you to do something on Dexter or Linwood or Livernoise or Joy Road, any of those pocket areas, Russellwood, Narden Park. We couldn't have you wait that long. Now, is that the catchment area, the Pleasant Heights? Yes. That's okay. our development area from west of 14th and Boston Edison going down, you know, going east. Going, If you're going uh, east, you're going to Limwood, you're going to Dexter, you're going to Liver Noise, um, you're going up down Grand River, going to Narden Park, and you're going down south towards the boulevard. Okay. Edwin, tell some of the things that Pleasant Heights has accomplished in that catchment area. Well, so far we've touched bases with uh, a lot of the churches and the people in the community. One key thing that we have done is we put a park there, Cotton Park, in the neighborhood. Where's that uh, at? Uh, where's um, right it's across from Rochester? And Rochester. Long. What church is that across? Sacred Heart Seminary. Sacred Heart. Okay. Catholic. So uh, we put that there, um, and just you know, just continue to pound the pavement and talk to people regularly. You know, because uh, as we go through the process of development. It's, you know, the political process is gruesome. You know, the legislative process is gruesome. And just, you know, staying with it, you know, staying in touch with the people as we do what needs to be done. So what are some of the goals then, Edwin, that Pleasant Heights wants to do in that area? Well, we definitely want to see a revised uh, community as far as in the way of entertainment possibilities, workforce development possibilities. When you say entertainment, what do you mean when you say entertainment? Well, we looking at movie theaters, you know, like, you know, I see my, my grandparents still live in the, in the Dexter area on Lawrence. Mm -hmm. And I can remember, you know, years back around the holiday time, leaving out there from Thanksgiving, you could see the Esquire Corn Beef Place. You, you know, Dexter was lit. It was mm -hmm. options right. of things to do there. Um, so we want to see that come back. And then you had a lot of you had a lot of entertainers that yeah. lived up in that, in that area, area as well. Yes. Because you know, the Supremes, right. some of the temptations, I think, you know, a lot of entertainers from Correct. back in the Motown you know. days that used to live on streets like Buena Vista, right. Waverly, Glendale, up through that area. Hey, look, Kwame Kilpatrick came from over there. Okay. He okay. lived right there on Tyler. And yeah. and Russellwood. Well, that's a little bit of history right. that we get from Expose Under the Sun. So right. that's good. So, I mean, ultimately our goal is to make sure that we have small market value um, commercial e-commerce over there. So mm -hmm. if you're starting a business, you can actually set up shop there. You know, we our goals is now to make sure that um, our housing, our affordable housing are, are met up to, up to code. Uh, we just, you know, we partnered up with the land bank. Okay. And the community partners. So we're focused to make sure everything is ran by and through the residents of the city of Detroit that live there, that live in that community. Like, okay. let's not get a misconception. It's very easy for you to bring other people that don't live in the, in communities like that come over there with a mission and a goal, and then come over there and turn it upside down and mm -hmm. say, "Hey, I'm this person. I'm the Great White Hope, or I'm the." I'm the best thing since sliced bread, right. and I can help you do these things. And then 30, 30 years later down the road, we're still in the same boat. Okay. One of the things that we wanted to do was say, you don't have to worry about that anymore. 
you don't have to worry about somebody making you a whole lot of promises. A lot of people don't know that we put, just put an art mural over there, over in Mr. Whitlow's barbershop, um, over there on Wildermere and Montgomery by Vicksburg and them and that stretch. Now, we did board ups already. You know, not just Kitan Park, though. We did Yates Park, which is no. by Aretha Franklin in the old church, New Bethel. Okay. So if you right go on Pingree. Linwood. Yeah, Linwood okay. and Pingree. So we've, we've already put almost, oh, I want to say, I'm going to be honest with you, roughly about $200,000 in that area alone, thanks to Irma Clark Coleman, who uh, Wayne County Commissioner okay. al- gave us our allotment funding for Kitan Park. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I always tell Edwin, he's Malcolm, mm-hmm. I'm Martin. <laughs> okay, so, but I'm gonna get my Malcolm on for this session. <laughs> okay, well let Malcolm not tell again. Okay, Malcolm, tell <laughs> in terms to say about the event that you've got coming up again on the fourth, twenty first, on the twenty first, rather. Right. So you know, again, we're gonna be touching on uh, the stuff that we have been working on more detail, uh, like workforce development um, and what we're bringing to the table. A lot of high-tech workforce development because one of the partnerships we have is CompTIA. CompTIA in the technology world, they sponsor certifications. So if you are an IT professional, A+, Net+, Linux+, Cisco, they, they facilitate those exams. Okay. Um, now tell, because we've got, we've got one minute left, okay. tell exactly where this is going to be at again and the time. It's going to be it's from 6 to 8, I believe. 6 to 9. 6 to 9. It's going to be at St. Cecilia on Burlingame. 10400 Stople Street. Stople Street. So that's near Grand River. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, you'll notice the beacon when you get Grand River and uh, in okay. Lebanon. Okay. All right. So 6 to 9. That is my alma mater. So, yes, please come. Okay. All right. Well, then, Ishmael. Edwin, I appreciate you both coming on the show. We'll have to have you come back again. Thanks for having us. I know that your event is going to be a very, very, you know, successful event that you're going to be involved in. And I pray that if anything else, that you will get an opportunity to go and have more forums like the one that you're going to be doing this coming. And I just want to say to your listening audience, you have no reason for not to come. Good. This this is something where we're bringing the resources to you. Okay. And you shouldn't miss this. Especially the crowd from 21 to 39. If you're looking to open up a job. All right. Mm -hmm. You've heard it live here. We are Expose Under the Sun. We've had our guests, Ishmael and Edwin, to talk about the event that they've got coming up. We're sponsored by the Detroit Native Sun newspaper. If you'd like to get a copy of the Detroit Native Sun news, you can go and you can contact Valerie Lockhart, and she can put an ad in the paper if you'd like to advertise. And her number is 313-457-5944. You can pick up the Detroit Native Sun news at your local Kroger supermarkets now as well. Again, want to thank my guests for coming on the show. Have a safe and peaceful week, and we'll see you again, same time, same station, next week. Ciao. And they can also ruin a relationship with their loved ones. Go talk to a family member, a friend, even a teacher, or you can go to a therapist, or if you need any extra help, you can go online and find all of those. Hashtag not worth it.